Blimey, it's autumn, there's leaves everywhere. Uh, hi, welcome back to the shop, it's good to see you again. I bought a boring head to adapt for my uh, CNC mill, so uh, let me explain. I've been experimenting with um, through spindle coolant with uh, some 3D printed um, test tool holders, uh, but more of that in the future. Uh, I've also been making some uh, embryo tool holders for my um, uh, mill, so uh, again, more of that in the future, but uh, this is what I'm here to talk about today. This is it. It's a 38 millimeter, inch and a half diameter um, in old money boring head with a 2MT shank. And it comes with a few bits, three tools and a couple of Allen keys. And uh, it cost me about the $38 pounds. Uh, I think it's um, uh, no going to be no longer stocked, I suspect, in the place I got it from. So they're just selling them off. And it's Imperial. And here in the UK, Imperial is getting rarer, shall we say. Um, now I bought this because uh, what I wanted to do is adapt one of my embryo tool holders to fit it and I thought right I'll, um, I'm going to have to machine this down to a parallel or machine a 2 MT taper in the end of that and I thought mm, that's difficult but luckily it unthreads. That is an M14 by one millimeter pitch, 14 by one. So uh, that's gonna be relatively easy to replicate on the end here, and it'll just screw on. So uh, let's get on with that. I've already got my collet chuck in, so uh, let's put that in and tighten it down. Let's make chips. So here's why pushing your lathe that hard is good and bad. Uh, it's bad because you're pushing your lathe quite hard. Uh, it's bad because the part and the chips are bloody hot. But I get to have a cup of tea while it all cools down. Ta-da! No, even I think that's a step too far. That's better. Right, next is a, a little chamfer on the end to get the th uh, so the threading tool just hit too hard when it starts. I'll put a gutter in so the thread, uh, the tool has got somewhere to run out. Right, that has to go down to the minor diameter of uh, an M14 by one. So what we got there, 11.55, that's close enough for me. This has never been a problem before, but uh, here's my thread dial indicator. And uh, once the tool is at the end, there isn't space to get it in. So, uh, I'm going to have to do this with a lathe permanently engaged to the feed screw and just walk it forwards and back. It's not easy to see this. I don't think you can see it at all. Oh, well, that's interesting. There is an error there. This is what I've been doing. Uh, I've used the um, carriage stop, the indicator that I made in the last video against the saddle. It's 
the lathe is in thread cutting gear, so the half nuts are engaged, and uh, I've marked the top of the uh, top dead center, if you like. Wrong analogy, but I've marked a point on the uh, casting for uh, a zero, uh, and I've also on this ball gear put a, a mark as well. So when those two line up, that's where I start my measurement. Uh, so pulling the lathe over by hand, I can see how far the carriage has moved. And when I line up the marks again, I'm spot on at one millimetre travel. However, this is why we do a scratch cut. This lathe is wrong. If you set the change gears up, which are in inside this housing, uh, with a 40 tooth, a 20, 120, 127 and a 40 tooth, and put it into C6, you should get a one millimetre pitch. However, that comes out at 1.06. So hence there's an error. Um, so there is another one here that uh, if you change to a 32, uh, 32 pinion and a 32 at the bottom, uh, and then you go into C1, you get a one millimetre pitch. That comes out at two millimetres. So C6, which is what I'm in at the moment, with this configuration of gears, so C6 should be 0.75, is actually one millimetre. So um, this lathe, this plate is all over the shop. We are now back, we're now back to where we should be, I think. So uh, now I've established the right gear ratio. That was an hour well spent. Uh, we should be able to just move in and take a scratch pass, so um, let's have another go. <laughs> Moment of truth, thread gauge. Yep, yep, that is indeed a one millimetre pitch. What a palaver! What a pavlova that was! Half an hour later, I've finished cutting the thread. It's not the best thread I've ever cut, but uh, it's good enough for this. So all I need to do now is put the blades back into high speed uh, and out of back gear and uh, chop this off to the right length and uh, face off this, um, this boss here, put a tiny little chamfer on it and Bob's your auntie. My God, you could ride bare ass to York on that. Not a tooth left on it. Right, another blade. Not new, but another one. That's better. Hurrah! Right. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. That'll be hot. Right, back to half rocket speed. So here we go. Chamfer, new tool to me, bought it only yesterday. So uh, let's see what we get with that. Oh, that's nice. <coughs> Whoops. Spot on, how's that? There we go. Let's try that out in the mill. Right, we've got a crappy old piece of aluminium, uh, six mil uh, carbide end mill for aluminium. Uh, and um, yeah, just gonna make a 15 millimetre hole in that. So uh, cycle start, cycle start. <laughs> So I've put the new tool uh, holder with the um, new boring head in the mill. Uh, I've um, finished boring out this, this holder and, and I'll show you a close up. You, if you look closely you can see 
some facets on the inside of the hole and that's I mean I think that's one of the things you're going to get with these hobby grade machines the um, the minimum step because it's a digital system it's stepping this way and stepping this way you're uh, to, to do a circular interpolation it's always going to be an approximation to a, uh, to a circular hole that's why putting a boring bar in actually this is going to scribe a perfect circle so um, if I just jog that down I've set this up so that um, it should take a tiny little cut um, the tool is lined this is the very very first time I've tried this uh, it's all set up and clamped down so uh, let's run it and see what happens M3 speed 1000 on it's a little bit quick speed 900 speed 800 that's better that's doing 600 560 rpm is that right 600 rpm yep right so now if I G1 Z minus four, hang on, can't type. G1 Z minus 14 at a feed of 20 millimeters per minute. Let's see what happens. There we go. Well, blow me, it's actually cutting a hole. There's some marks in the, in the wall. Uh, I might just run that again, just to uh, take out a little bit more and see whether that improves. There we go. The, uh, it's clearly going to leave these marks and I think I know why and I'll show you. So here we are at the optical comparator and uh, if I set, uh, you'll have to take my word for this because it's a bit tricky for me to get it, but that point there which is the, the, the main shaft of this uh, tool uh, is 8 millimeters. so what I'm going to do is uh, uh, put a bit of wood over it uh, what I'm going to do is right in the center I have uh, I'm on the corner of the chamfer uh, of that major diameter and I've set my dial to zero so if I go down that's one millimeter two three four five six seven and get right on the other side there we go I make that at 7.92 so let's let's call that eight millimeters because it it pretty much is um, so if I go back up to four one two three four now I'm parked right in the middle of that of the major uh, of the clamping shaft Hopefully that makes sense. So now let me just run this over. This is the business end of the tool. And there you go. Hopefully you should be able to see enough of it as I rotate it. If you rotate it, uh, you can actually just see about there. Oops. Let me just see if I can focus that up a bit. There we go. You can just make out where the where the cutting face is perpendicular to the uh, uh, to the light source, uh, and you can see. Hopefully, you can see that's no longer in the middle. So, if I move that up to being in the middle, I can tell you exactly how far out it is. It's. one point seven millimeters so uh, so what I'm trying to say is 
the the center line of the tool should be the center line of the cutting edge should be exactly on the center line of the tool and it's 1.7 millimeters tall too high so uh, this this tool will never cut properly it's as simple as that well there you have it if you um, want to buy one of these cheap import boring heads and uh, and make an adapter to fit your machine uh, feel free go ahead it's um, it's a worthwhile thing to do but I've, I've um, read on the forums that people have said that the, uh, the tools that they come with are rubbish. And uh, if, my, if it makes sense with what I did with the little optical comparator, you can see this will never cut properly because um, uh, it, you'll never be able to get it on centre height. So uh, the thing to do with these is, in the bin of broken dreams, uh, and grind your own. Uh, I've got some 8 mil tool steel on uh, on order so um, hopefully that'll be here and I'll grind some tools up but uh, thanks for watching please hit the bell and subscribe button and we will uh, see you on the next one take care bye bye